In our previous lesson, we discussed the way in which connective tissue is classified according to the types of specialised cells and the nature and organisation of the extracellular matrix. In this lesson, we will look more closely at connective tissue proper, of which there are two types. There is loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Both of these tissues act as our body's packing material in that they fill the spaces between our organs to keep them intact. To begin with, we will look at the details of loose connective tissue, which is the most abundant type of connective tissue. When we took a tour of the mouth, you may remember looking at loose connective tissue on the inside of our lips. This tissue type allows free movement with minimal resistance. Loose connective tissue contains extracellular protein fibres, a viscous ground substance and two classes of cells. Firstly, there are fixed cells which are responsible for the general maintenance of the tissue and wandering cells which are responsible for defending and repairing damaged tissue. So let's look at the following diagram which will give us an overview of the cell types that we find in loose connective tissue. Of the fixed cells, we have melanocytes, responsible for the production of melanin, which gives us a tan and protects us from UV radiation. Fixed macrophages, which are immune cells that defend the tissue from invading pathogens. Mast cells, which stimulate local inflammation by releasing histamine. These are the culprits that bring about hay fever. Fibroblasts, which produce the extracellular fibres. And adipocytes, or fat cells, that store our fatty reserves. Amongst the wandering cells, we find many of the cells of our immune system, such as plasma cells, wandering macrophages, and white blood cells. There are also special cells referred to as mesenchymal cells. These are stem cells that are responsible for the repair of the tissue. It's hard to believe, but they have been around since the development of the embryo and are capable of changing into a variety of cells based on the needs of the tissue. So now that you've become familiar with the type of cells we find in loose connective tissue, it's time to explore the types of fibres that we find in this tissue. This tissue is firstly made up of these strong reticular fibres that form branching networks, almost like a sling that protects our organs. It also is made up of our stronger collagen fibres that are actually there for resilience and strength. And finally, the slender and stretchy elastic fibres that can recoil after a good long stretch. There are three types of loose connective tissue. We have areola, adipose and reticular. Areola, which is the most common form and contains all of the cell types we previously mentioned. We find areola tissue beneath all our epithelial layers. Adipose tissue has limited extracellular space, but lots of fat-loving cells called adipocytes, which form a cushion around our delicate organs. Adipose tissue is also found beneath the skin for insulation and protection. Reticular tissue is where reticular fibres dominate to form tough, flexible scaffolds for more delicate structures such as glands.